p.m. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Eric, our attendance tonight? Uh, just Nikki, who is no one won't make it. Very good. Thank you. Would you all please rise and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. First item tonight would be to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor with an aye. 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 Any opposed? motion carries. First up tonight is public forum. Before we begin public forum, uh, take this opportunity to remind everyone of the importance of meeting decorum. We do not allow slander, defamation, profanity, personal attacks, or revelations of private data. As chair, I respectfully request that the public refrain from interrupting speakers during public forum. <coughs> You'll be provided three minutes, asked to state your name, address and the subject you wish to address. I'm gonna take these cards in the order that they were presented to me. First card is from Jane Parr, Ms. Parr, welcome. Hi, um, my name is Jane Parr. And my address is 560 Oakwood Lane. And what was the other thing? <laughs> Your subject. Oh, yeah. So CRT, equity, um, that's what I, I want to make a comment about. I'm a retired teacher from our school district and also a parent of two OHS graduates. I appreciate that our school system is committed to equity in educating our students and meeting each student's individual needs so they can be successful learners. We're very fortunate in Owatonna that some college level classes are accessible to our students thanks to nearby colleges. These are offered as electives such as the one on critical race theory. Some students elected to take this, and hopefully their parents were aware of their course selection. These electives offered for college credit increase the knowledge and critical thinking of our students. Students who are taught to think critically learn to solve problems for themselves. This is a valuable life skill. And I'm very pleased that we have students who signed up for the class and who acknowledge the racial issues in our community and schools and want to be part of the solutions. I commend all of you on the school board who help provide these opportunities and who support the success of all students in our Owatonna schools. Thank you. Ms. Parr, thank you. <laughs> Next card is from Joanna Egbert. Ms. Egbert, come on up. Welcome. Hello. I'm Joanna Egbert. Do you need my address? I'm sorry. I have it here. Go okay. ahead. And um, I'm here to speak on critical race theory. And this was a statement from my daughter. She was not able to be here because she is at college. Hello, my name is Elise Egbert. And I'm very excited to share with you today my experiences in it, the introduction to critical race theory class at Owatonna High School. I am very sorry I'm not able to be in person with you all today, but I'm very excited to share with you how much the introduction to critical race theory class has had such a positive impact on my life. I would like to start by saying that I originally had no intent on taking any CRT related class. I did not see it as important in my education considering I'm going into a math based field and thought there would be better classes to spend my time on. But after the events of last summer that happened so close to home, 
I found it my personal duty to learn more about the history of race in America and how that it still impacts our country and our citizens today. I don't want to lecture you on what I learned through taking the high school CRT class, but I will say that there was a lot of eye-opening information that was presented to me in the class that I seriously doubt I would have ever heard of anywhere else. Take, for instance, the Tulsa Race Massacre of 1921 or the Japanese internment camps during World War II. I think it is important to note that all these new topics were introduced to me in a way that allowed me to form my own opinions on them. I never felt as if a certain point of view was forced upon me. I was simply being introduced to new concepts that helped me to expand my perspectives. Many people are worried that CRT will teach our students a skewed view of history, or even that it will manipulate them into thinking a certain way about race. But I can say that this has been far from my experience. CRT, like any other class, is taught to educate our students with the skills to form their own opinions. The only thing that CRT does differently is that it exposes our students to things that are often overlooked in our history that impacts our culture and our society today. People are also worried that CRT is divisive, yet my personal experiences could not be more different. I can honestly say that never in my life have I felt more unified with a group of peers than in my CRT class. We were encouraged to share our personal experiences and opinions, yet as different as our opinions and experiences may be, we all had a common goal of bettering ourselves. The class was ultimately aimed at a goal of personal growth for everyone and being able to apply that to the world around us. We were encouraged to see things differently and found that we were able to grow more when we explored each other's views than when we simply kept our own. It is because of the immense growth that I've noticed in myself and also my peers that I encourage you to support the continuation of a CRT class at the high school. I hope that being able to hear our personal experiences can clarify some yes, common misconceptions about the class and encourage people more about to learn more about CRT. Thank you. Our next card is Zach Radke. Mr. Radke, come on up. Welcome. Hi. So, I probably haven't done one of these since high school, so this will be fun. Um, my name is Zach Radke. Um, are we starting now or whenever? Do I need to tell you anything else? Uh, by a show of hands in here, how many people are fans of history class, including new board members um, and Mr. Elstead? That's a pretty large percentage um, of, in this room. I will be speaking on the growing problem in our country and trying to open eyes to the devastating things we are doing to our neighbors and especially our children. Does anyone know how Nazi Germany got their masses to follow and obey tyranny? They used propaganda in everyday aspects of society. They literally burned books so people could not even think freely. What the news outlets did to push Hitler's narrative was even worse. They were indoctrined without resistance to the tyrannical regime. Uh, hold on. America played a huge role in reading the world of tyranny then, and it looks like we are going to have to do it again. Do we want to be like the people of Australia and what the government is doing to them right now? This leads me to my main point. We as a society are allowing the minority and mainly one person, Dr. Anthony Fauci, to be the know-all, end-all of knowledge. That is a scary path, don't you think? Anytime information that goes against his word, it is labeled as misinformation even if it is from world-renowned scientists or doctors. If they have information that goes against his, they are automatically no longer relevant or reputable, even if they have been for 50 years. To me, it sounds a lot like a dictatorship, and do as I say, not as I do. We all know the people pushing these mandates have been caught disobeying their own orders. There are too many examples to mention here, and I think all of us in this room know it to be true. If we mask our children any longer, we are going to have permanent detrimental health and psychological effects, and we will be responsible for it. You, me, and everybody in this room and beyond for not taking action and following the real science about COVID and masking. I believe all of you care about our children, and if you think about it, this is literally an experiment. This has never been done before. 
We have no idea what the effects will be. It says right on the box of masks that they are not effective against viruses, including the coronavirus. This should be a checkmate for anyone that has any logical thinking skills. Maybe we should think about that instead of critical race theory thinking. Logical thinking skills. If this is, a manda if this is mandated, I hope the community of Owatonna stands up and elects members to this room that have our kids' best interests at heart. And I promise I will do everything in my power to see that through. A quick note on critical race theory. My study of this theory implies that America is inherently bad and racist. Now, if this were true, would we not have total control of the whole world since World War II, when we were the only country with atomic bombs? No, we as patriots and people that love people of all races took that technology and worked with the rest of the world so it would never be used again. Teaching kids critical race theory will inevitably lead our country into socialism and Marxism. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Radke, thank you. Uh, next card is, uh, and please forgive me, Koki? Konki? Did I get it right? Yes, close enough. Yeah. My mother would correct you. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Konki, welcome. Thank you. Zach, Address. I loved what you had to begin with, with about history. But beyond the there, I think we're going to be in disagreement. 424 so. prospect is correct. That yes? is correct. Please go ahead. You have three minutes. Yes, sir. I am Reverend Koki Kaki, a resident of Owatonna. I am a former middle school teacher. I am the child of educators, and I am the parent of educators. I am here today to express my support for the school board, for Superintendent Elstad, and the decisions you are making so that students are career and college ready. That includes giving them tools for and experiences in critical thinking. Thank you. That's all I need to say. Ms. Conkey, thank you. <laughs> Up next would be Jason Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs, welcome. As you're sitting down, can I get your address from you? 50 Hagen Place. One more time. 50 Hagen Place. Thank you. Please go ahead. All right. Well, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight, and thank you for serving on the school board, and also thank you for your efforts towards improving equality in our district and community. I was here a couple months ago in support of CRT. I listened to the opponents of this and left feeling there's more of a need for this education than I originally thought. People opposed to teaching CRT noted they were not racist. That is not what it is about. CRT is not calling individuals racist. It proposes that there may be racism embedded in policies and laws that explain why some groups of people may be at a disadvantage. You have to be able to separate yourself out of this and look at it from a much larger scale. Instead of teaching CRT and promoting equality, I heard the argument that our district needs to be teaching people about real history, such as Martin Luther King. This comment implies that racism and racism, racism in policies immediately ended after the life of Martin Luther King. The fact is, a lot of history has happened since then in relation to racism and continued struggles, and we should not, we should not ignore this past, but learn from it. Finally, I heard one of the solutions offered up by an opponent of teaching equality and CRT was that, was that people just need to work harder. This comment implies that people are disadvantaged because they just do not work hard enough, as if there is something inherently lazy about them versus facing additional obstacles in their way. I know a lot of different people of different races, including white, that work hard and things do not necessarily pan out. Feel that proposed solution helps nothing. This is all the more reason to create education that sparks conversation, understanding, and hopefully new ideas. I do have a recommendation for the district as I realize that CRT has been removed due to unavailable staffing. In your pursuit of equality in our district, I encourage you to take a look at our extracurricular activities and the obstacles that may be in the way for those that might be disadvantaged. As an example, our family paid an activity fee from the school. Then I was told at a parent meeting there was a check to the boosters that was required, in addition to further fees for warm-up, sweatshirts. You add this to the ask that parents serve the entire team a meal, and it starts to make it unaffordable, especially for those already at a disadvantage. Then times this by more than one child, maybe it's two or three, and it all starts to add up. 
If this is not enough, your child is asked to go door to door to sell and raise money for that sport. If I were a parent of a minority in this community, I would have some safety concerns asking my child to go door to door when I know by reading social media comments of certain community members that they would not be welcome. If you look at our sports teams, music and theater, the numbers do not reflect the percentages of diversity in our community. Why is that? I believe it is because we have created an unintentional environment where the advantaged, privileged, and accepted have a leg up. Thank you for your time. Mr. Jacobs, thank you. Next card is Rebecca Moore. Ms. Moore, welcome. 1156 Jaden, right? Yes, thank you. I live in the school district and currently have three children in various public schools here. I also have two who have graduated from OHS. I have been debating saying anything over the past month and have decided that I would regret it more if I stayed silent than if I offered up a few comments. I want the school board to know that there are individuals and families, many in this room, who support the district's commitment to equity. I can say unequivocally on behalf of my family that we appreciate the school district's leadership and its stance on creating a more inclusive and equitable learning environment for every student. It matters to many families that we continue to pursue a world that includes many perspectives, celebrates differences, and looks honestly and critically at the status quo. I've listened to concerns shared recently during these meetings about offering critical race theory. I have heard a lot of misinformation and fear in these comments. I can understand wanting the best for your family. That's why I'm here too. I was left wondering though, if any of the concerned parents had requested a syllabus or actually looked into what a CRT course offers before coming and condemning the school district. As I understand it, CRT was not going to be offered at all grade levels. It was only an elective offered to upper level students. CRT is a framework to look at how systems and policies in America have treated people based on race. There is no denying that people have been treated differently based on race in this country. Talking about this and learning about this isn't divisive. The problem is not CRT. The problem is racism. Let's start saying that. And just because something makes us uncomfortable does not mean it's wrong. My family is biracial. My children deserve to have a true and fair accounting of history taught to them and their peers and have the opportunity to examine practices and policies with their critical thinking caps on, and so we learn how not to repeat the mistakes of our past. Now it seems the concern is equity. We see equity play out in many forms every day, actually. It is equitable to give a blind student resources in Braille. It is equitable to give the student in a wheelchair proper access to buildings. It is equitable to give every football player the proper sized equipment, not one size fits all. In fact, in all of those scenarios, it would be dangerous and ridiculous to not provide an equitable solution. It only seems to be in the context of race that equity becomes a problem. I'm an optimist and I believe in the common good. So I believe that those of us in this room who are on opposite sides of this can find common ground. We may not agree on everything, but finding common ground should be our first good starting point, listening with open minds and curiosity would be a good place to start. So I urge the school board to remain steadfast in your commitment to equity. It matters. There's more that is your time. And many families are counting on you. Thank you. Uh, next card is Angie Langley. Ms. Langley, welcome. Hi. Yeah, my address? Uh, 1810. Yep. Rosewood Drive. Got it. Thank you. Members of the board and Superintendent Elstead, I'm here today as a concerned and disappointed citizen. First, I and everyone else in the community owe each of you an apology. We must own our own responsibility in the lack of accountability and transparency that has developed in the school district. We reached this point because we the people have forgotten that we are the government. Worse still, you have forgotten that you are our servants, each of you elected, appointed, and hired. Together we are all here to blame. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Elstead, 
I watched with dismay as you used the platform of your position as superintendent of our school district to appear in the Barbershop Talk Show YouTube channel from Rochester on October 1st of 2019. In that appearance, you were introduced as the superintendent of the Owatonna School District. Ms. Langley, I'm going to stop you. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. This is a personal it's attack. A no, it's not. She's it's a fact. a fact. It's Statement actually fact. public it's knowledge. It's just a fact. Statement of fact. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do I get my time back? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. In that appearance, you were introduced as the superintendent of the Owatonna School District and then referred to yourself as community leader in Owatonna. In that interview, speaking as a representative of ISD 761, you refer to the staff of the Owatonna School District <clears throat> as not only being unconsciously biased, but consciously biased. The reality of that statement is that you accused ISD 761 staff of openly engaging in racism. But Mr. Elstead, that wasn't enough for you. Not in the least. In that same conversation, you state that you actively interrupt people in the community when you hear them saying inappropriate things in public and that Owatonna is a racist community. I cannot emphasize enough, Mr. Elstead, that as a public servant speaking in your official capacity, you had no right and no permission to speak about your employers in such a way. If you choose to speak as a private citizen and say these things, that is your right, but not as an appointed servant, ISD 761. I and many others here defend your First Amendment liberty to speak of your beliefs in public and in any forum. But as your employers, as we the people, you have no permission from us to speak in this official capacity. Neither does any member of the school board have the authority to grant you such permission. One can reasonably deduce what your response would be if a staff member of the school district stood outside holding a sign that read, as an official representative of ISD 761, I know Elstead is a submersive March's shill. While that would have, they would have the right to hold that opinion, they do not have that right to speak as a representative of ISD 761. Mr. Elstead, you are that employee. But instead of holding a sign, you went on YouTube and called your employers, we the people, a community of racists. You, sir, should be censored by the board, and you should publicly apologize to each and every member of this community for denigrating all of us in that way. Until then, we the people will be here at each and every school board meeting speaking to this issue of insubordination and feckless and callous spite for us, your true government. Thank you. Next card is uh, Angie Stowe. Ms. Stowe, as you're coming up, it's 615 Cherry, correct? Correct. Thank you, everyone, for being here. You all play a very important role here. I'm going to talk about the Pledge of Allegiance. The meaning of the Pledge of Allegiance is the official oath of loyalty to the flag of the United States of America. The meaning of republic is a form of government in which the power is held by the people and their elected representatives. One nation under God, this is not only one nation under God, because God is above all nations, so every nation is under God. This is not about the United States, it's about our nation. This is not about the founding fathers, it's about God. This is not about man's government, it is about God's kingdom. And I would like to add, with all, we're all held accountable for our actions. Indivisible definition, not divisible, not separable into parts, incapable of being divided, one nation indivisible. Liberty meaning is a quality or state of being free. And justice, for all means, we aim to provide and protect liberty and justice for all individuals, regardless of gender, race, economic status, political, ideology, or religious background. The op opposite is being implemented in our society and our world right now. The hidden agenda sneakily inserting these various topics to cause hatred, division, demean, suppress, take out Christianity, take out our constitutional right, and I could go on and on. You can lie and you can hide it all you want, but there are consequences for what we bring to our mind and speak out throughout our actions and our words. In the Bible, Proverbs 18.21 states, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Dr. Caroline Leaf is a cognitive neuro neuroscientist, describes the science of thinking. The way we think changes everything in our brain. It triggers and activates facial expressions. 
External stimulation, how we react to positive or negative is so important. We need smiles, facial expressions to show love, kindness, and more. We see the impact of what all this negative has done. When we say something, we need to mean it. Examples, put on your mask, take off your mask. Put on your mask, take it off, it's better. Dr. Leaf also states it takes 63 days of doing the same thing over and over that will change our brain. Look how long all this confusion and chaos has gone on. God can heal, and most importantly, he will. In concluding, the battle belongs to the Lord. He wins. He has called us to step out for such a time as this. The darkness that many are entertaining is and will get shut down. Amen, and thank you. Amen. Ms. Stowe, thank you. Uh, Ms. Robbins, Sue Robbins, I, I, will, I will apologize to you. I did look through our policy. I did not find the policy specific that said that you would not be able to speak. Uh, Sue Robbins, 6134 East 118th Street, Blooming Prairie. Yes. Come on up. I give my time to someone else. You filled out a second card. Yeah, for that reason. To well, no, you you have the opportunity for your three minutes. If, no, she can't. We're going to move on. Next card would be uh, Beth Giltvet. <laughs> Ms. Giltvet, welcome. It's 5642 rows, correct? Correct. Unlike most others, I do not have a prepared speech for you today. First of all, though, I want to thank the school board and all the uh, members of the Owatonna com uh, community for electing you, uh, because that you are doing your duty by having these meetings, and I really appreciate that, and thank you very much. Uh, I am a parent of uh, Owatonna High School grad, and I grew up actually in Oklahoma. And in Oklahoma, we had a whole year of Oklahoma history, or whole semester, excuse me, of Oklahoma history. During that time, because of the indigenous peoples in Oklahoma, we learned a lot about Native Americans. We learned a lot about the Trail of Tears, for instance. We didn't learn about racism against Native Americans um, at that time. That was in the 60s. And we learned nothing about the Texas race massacre. Nothing. I learned about that myself last year. And I was ashamed to say that growing up in Oklahoma, I had no idea that that had happened, despite the fact that my parents had lived in Tulsa. Um, they were a little young during that time, but they had lived there. So um, I really believe in the founder's ideal of equity and people having the right to speak, the media to be here, you know, all of those things that are in the Declaration of Independence. I really believe very, very strongly in that. Um, CRT is it's a theory that provides techniques to analyze US history and the legal institutions that acknowledge that racial problems don't just go away when Martin Luther King is assassinated or you know, when the John Lewis Voting Act gets passed. These things don't just go away. They don't go away as long as we leave them unaddressed. And I believe that we have left them unaddressed. And I think we need to continue to address them. And one of the ways that we address them is teaching people critical race theory so they can analyze history and learn history the way it, um, the way it happened. And it doesn't need to be um, whitewashed, blackwashed. It doesn't need to be washed at all. But we are learning more and more when we learn things like learning about the Texas race massacre, about what has happened in this country, how there have been legal codifications that um, promote no equity and uh, allow certain system. Um, if everybody is um, um, 
equal under the law, then everyone is equal under the law. And just a little historical aside that I like to sometimes mention, um, the Pledge of Allegiance, when that was formulated, that is did, did not ha have under God. That was added in the 1950s during the communist scare. Thank you. Thank you. Next card is uh, Sarah Zimmerman. Sarah, as you're coming up, it's, uh, it's 805 15th Street, right? 505. 505. Are you ready? OK. Uh, my name is Sarah Zimmerman, and I want to talk about the equity slash critical race theory conversation. Um, parents and Americans of all colors are standing up by the masses to protest this vile Marxist ideology that has taken over our public schools. Uh, this evil and less than transparent shift has been well crafted and is being implemented behind the backs of parents all over the country. Although you are trying to get out in front of it and squash this community interest by saying CRT is not offered in our district, um, it is, and it goes beyond an elective class. It's the equity and the whole culture that you guys are ushering in. Um, you have been implementing and training staff on equity for years now. Equity CRT, these are just a couple of the long list of terms that are used to describe this abhorrent culture you are also invested in. Uh, you were hired and elected to protect and care for all children. Um, you are failing them and your teachers. Uh, we as parents need to take responsibility for not holding you accountable sooner. That is on us. We trusted that you have the best interest of all children in mind when you make decisions that directly affect them and shape them for the rest of their lives. We trusted that you would continue the values that we as Americans and as parents teach them at home, to love one another based on one's character, not their skin color, that we love God and our country. We are all fortunate enough to live in the greatest country ever, the land of the free because of the brave, where opportunity is endless regardless of your skin color. But instead, you are teaching these children to first put their color lens on. Um, this is the most mentally, emotionally, and socially abusive thing I have ever heard of. Instead of teaching these children that the sky is the limit and anything is possible if they put the heart, grit, and determination, into it, you're teaching them that they are either one, oppressors of their classmates or family members of color, or two, oppressed by their white classmates or family members. And whatever they succeed or fail at is a result of the color of their skin. That is very offensive. Um, what a grotesque heaviness and confusion you are placing on all of our children. Um, since dividing and segregating our children isn't enough, you are implementing a new curriculum that takes facts and data out of our classrooms and replaces it with a perverted rewritten history. Our children are not pawns in your social justice, justice experiment. Um, you are a public school system, and you need to come back to the reality of what your duties are. We expect you to educate them, not indoctrinate them. Um, we expect that you show them that skin color does not matter, that we love each other, we help each other, and we lift each other up. Um, that when you um, apply yourself, and that, or that you do well when you apply yourself, and that failure is not a symptom of the color of your skin. Um, January 17th is MLK Day. Students do not have class, and it is marked as a staff development day. Mr. Elstead, I truly hope you take this opportunity to, to stop undoing everything that MLK fought for and dreamed of for our children and our country, and that you get our district back on track. Um, after meeting with a couple of you and being told that this is not what equity is and it isn't happening in our district. Ms. Zimmerman, that is your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next card is Jamie Van Oosbury. As you're coming up, it's 520 Cedardale Drive, correct? Yes. Um, hello, I'm Jamie. Um, I don't have a pre-written speech, but I just came to tell you guys that I really appreciate all the hard work um, that the entire school board is doing right now. Um, I've seen the videos on social media um, that other school districts are having to deal with. Um, with things that are not even on the agenda or sometimes things that are, are on the agenda and that are, you know, the videos are going viral because of um, the violence and behavior in the crowds. And I want to thank you 
um, for you guys being so upstanding and so stellar that you have control of your meeting, that you're listening to all the things, and and your willingness to continue and stay the course. Um, Mr. Elstead, I did see when you were on Barbershop Talks, and I have to say that that was a turning point in my household. Um, I've talked before about um, my son, who is black, and about some of his experiences at the Owatonna High School. And I appreciate you going on there, and I appreciate you acknowledging um, the issues that were present in the school at that time. And I appreciate your dedication to changing those issues and to making sure that kids moving forward aren't going to have to have those same experiences, the negative ones that my son did. Um, my son did say that his junior and senior year were very different than his school year up until that point. And so I appreciate you going and speaking very publicly instead of trying to hide the issues that are out there and bringing them to the light so that we can work on them together as a community. So thank you. Thank you. The next card uh, has been presented in the form of three uh, cards. And it's my understanding that the three of you are going to come up together. Is that right? So it's Natalie Hurtado, Ruviana uh, Skalrud, and Jenna Dolan. Is it Dolan Bach? Yeah. Do I have that? Yes. Do I have all of that correct? Yes. And you three realize that doing it in this approach, you're sharing your three minutes. Is that? Oh, okay, I'll go oh. with it. Mr. Sebring, I think it would be fair to let all three of them have three minutes. They had the guts to come here. Is that mm -hmm. is your preference to have yes, each of you? Just, you just wanted to be okay. together. Yeah, I'm going to talk separately, and then we're going to, like, yeah, because we were a little nervous. Okay. Thank you. Who, which of you is speaking first? Uh, me, Ruviana. Go ahead. Hello, everyone, and thank you for having me. My name is Riviana Skarud, and I'm a senior here at the Oatana High School. I'm here to speak about critical race theory because I feel that there are many misconceptions about the class. As a student who recently took the class, I would love to speak with you all about my personal experience. So throughout the course of my life, race has always been a topic that we continue to brush off during conversations, whether it be at school, with friends, at work, or even for some at home. This is why at the beginning of the semester I was eager, I was so eager and excited to take a course called Critical Race Theory because I strongly believe that it is important for students to become educated on the impacts that racism has on our society. I will forever be grateful for this class because I am now able to use CRT as a lens to examine problems in our society in a way that I never would have looked at the same prior to taking this course. Being able to have this courageous com being able to have these courageous conversations with my classmates has been so crucial in my um, evolving understanding of the world and how it impacts others in so many different ways. Thanks to this class, it has encouraged me to become more socially aware as well as learn the, as well as learn the importance of staying involved in these courageous conversations, not only in, in class, but throughout my daily life in order to continue to educate myself as well as advocate for others to my best of my ability. This has been one of very few and limited classes where we are truly able to have these courageous conversations and actually go into depth. So I honestly think it would be truly disappointing to take away this opportunity to learn about critical race theory because it has made such a huge and positive impact on me and my classmates. It is to my understanding that a misconception about this class is that it creates a divide between the community as well as fueling this anti-white culture. But my personal experience, I believe that it's completely false. CRT does not argue that white people now or to blame for the past, but that we all have the moral responsibility to do something about how racism still impacts our society today. Not once in my class were we ever singled out for the color of our skin, but instead brought together by our differences with our racial autobiographies, where we got <coughs> to present our own backgrounds, something I have never done in, one of my, in any of my previous classes. Our differences are to be acknowledged and celebrated, not stored away in a closet like a dirty secret. America is a melting pot. We are diverse, whether you like it or not. Why can't we acknowledge that? Why are some of you ashamed to learn the truth about America, ashamed of the diversity that makes our country? Being pro-critical race theory isn't anti-white. It's pro-diversity. That means everybody, not just one race. Majority of, majority of us have a multicultural background. A majority is blended, including me, 
Why do I have to learn just one side of my story? The future isn't just all white or all black, it's blended. Okay, hello. My name is Jenna Dallenbach and I am a senior at the Owatonna High School. I appreciate the opportunity to share. I have listened to students of color in my school's personal experiences and after hearing these stories, I cannot stay silent. As a student, I would love the chance to take a class and that allows me to better understand my fellow classmates. These conversations may be uncomfortable, but they are necessary for growth. And taking this class that provides guided conversations about race can be very beneficial for us students. We can always learn more and I can always learn more. And I want to have love and compassion for everyone. And I think taking a class like this can be a start. So thank you. Ms. Dollenbach, thank you. Natalie. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Natalie, and I am a graduate of Owatonna High School. I have been in Owatonna for about 11 years now. I moved here at a young age from Lima, Peru. Although Owatonna might not have been where I was born, it has always felt like hometown. I went to school at McKinley Elementary, went to middle school at Willow Creek and OJHS, and graduated from OHS. I have a deep admiration for my community, and due to that, I want what's best for it. Growing up in Owatonna, I have always had a sense that I was different. Whether it be because of my appearance or a language and culture barrier, I felt a sense of alienation from my peers. Freeing out my identity and a place in my community would take me years, but once I did, I grew to appreciate my individuality. Moving forward to my senior year, I jumped at the opportunity to take critical race theory, race, something that has hardly ever been discussed in school. I had no previous knowledge of CRT. I only took the class because the name sounded interesting. However, I can say now that CRT is one of the most important classes I have ever taken. CRT made sense of so many things that I have seen and experienced that I could not explain. It gave me a voice by encouraging honest conversations with my classmate. Listening to others' experiences helped me realize that I am not alone. I think when we look at racism in our community and nation, we often hope to find someone to blame, someone to point a finger to that is responsible for the past, present, and future. However, CRT does not enforce or promote that. CRT teaches us to look at the past, identify fat patterns, learn from them, and use that knowledge to our advantage now. CRT holds us responsible for our own actions, and it pushes us to be better. I, as a Latino woman, am just as responsible as anyone else to fight racism, to fight for a better community, to fight for a stronger and more united Owatonna. Mr. Tato, thank you. Next card is April St. Martin. April, as you're on your way up, would you give us your address, please? Sure. Uh, 427 March. Thank you. As one of CRT's most popular evangelical speakers, to say speakers, Ibram Kendi shockingly writes, the only remedy to racist discrimination is anti-discrimination. The only remedy to past discrimination is present discrimination. While you might expect a racist statement like this to come from someone in the 1950s Alabama, CRT and anti-racism scholars are pushing intentional racist discrimination against oppressors across the United States. In short, CRT is a Marxist ideology which claims to uncover racism baked into American society in institutions like the police, as well as our own individual hearts and minds. CRT then tries to remove that racism by tearing down institutions and discriminating against the privileged. This new discrimination, discrimination is intended to produce equity, not equality, in racial outcomes. CRT claims that every social outcome is race-influenced, and CRT measures 
whether racism exists by the outcomes people of different races experience across society. So if one racial group is wealthier or performs better than another in a certain area of life, that difference was caused by racism. CRT avoids reviewing individual instances to see whether there was actual discrimination. CRT claims that people with power, not individual decisions, create social constructs that determine how we think and what we do. For example, CRT claims that race is a social construct, not a biological difference, and it has been created by white people with power to oppress black people. Therefore, our everyday lives are controlled by those in power and our existence is just a competition between groups over power, not a product of our individual decisions. So those who are oppressed can mostly blame the oppressors for their personal situations. I want to make it very clear to everybody in this room that I am not against open dialogue and against conversations about race. I have absolutely no problem with that. But this is not the answer. CRT is not the answer. I implore you, as who work for us, to do what is right by our children. And no more of this. No more CRT. What we are asking for is something like the 1776 Project, which gives good and bad history. Which this, this history, this nation was not founded on perfect people, on people who did no wrong, and people who haven't done wrong. And I'm not saying that we're not perfect. You say, Martin, that is your time. OK, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Next card is uh, Anthony Hernandez. Mr. Hernandez, come on in. Can I sit on your lap? <laughs> just kidding. And I'm just double checking. It's 332 East Rose, right? Correct. Okay, hold on. Don't start yet. Go ahead, sir. Okay. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless us all. And a prayer for all those lost and stranded in Afghanistan. Amen. School mass mandate. Elbitly required grades 6 through 12. Fairbolt optional. Mankato required K through 8. Otana recommended. Rochester required. Austin strongly recommended. I've witnessed people, ch children wearing masks. In my observations, I witnessed mask violations. A mask under the chin. Every single person with a mask either took it off, pushed it off constantly, touched the mask, wiped their nose, and touched everything around them. Do we really expect a child to wear one and actually use it effectively when adults cannot themselves? A mask, if made to wear properly, will cause irritation, distraction, and failure in the classroom, not to mention contaminate the whole classroom. So why put our children through it? Government compliance or tyranny? Kids cannot properly and constantly function with a mask. I know I can't. God bless. So equity is not the problem if you look at the word, and we're not talking about your house of power. It's actually when you type in Google, equity versus equality, also everything changes. And that's the problem here. And if I was a minority, I would not have a problem going house to house for funds, for a school fundraiser. Because I think people would be more afraid of the minority than vice versa. God bless on that. Thank you. Mr. Hernandez, thank you. Our next card is uh, Tanya Paley. Ms. Paley, welcome. Thanks. 3008 North Ridge Lane. Yes. So I also don't have a prepared speech. I just, um, I was aware that um, there have been a number of people who have come and made um, arguments against um, equity and the um, the district's commitment to equity. 
Um, I really think that this critical race theory piece is just part of that. I, um, I'm hearing them saying that, they, that it's really all tied up in whether people should wear masks and whether we believe in equity and whether we, um, and you know, for me, it's all about um, having empathy for other people and um, understanding that not everybody's experience through history has been the same and that that might color um, the way things turned out for them. And um, I, will, I will also say, you know, when I think back to my history classes, um, I just, I think that um, we have been teaching history in a way that kind of um, only shows one side of the story. And so for me, it's really about just um, opening up the box and saying, you know, so for, for me, it's, it's just about how we, we teach history. And, it, and it's not indoctrination, it's, it's examination of um, the facts and how they happened. You know, I was talking, I have, you know, I'm white, I have two white daughters. Um, they've both been to college now and taken a lot of classes that have addressed history in different ways. And I think about how we want to get our children to succeed in life and be able to be part of the future. And the future is really about um, understanding where we came from and where we're going and having a positive, empathetic um, approach to humanity. So to me, that's, that's really what this is about. And I, um, I really want to say that we as a community can stand for that without coming up with labels about critical race theory or equity. I think it's really about um, being a welcoming community, being a caring community, recognizing the humanity in every child, and um, giving people an opportunity. I mean, I was so moved by those young women that came and spoke just now, because really for them, the, they know that we are in this moment in this country where we're facing a lot of really difficult things. And I know, I mean, I, I, I sense the fear in our country um, around so many different things. And I think that um, what Beale. they, okay, what they expressed was love. Thank you. Uh, next card is uh, Naomi Jirley. Do I have to sit here? Can I just stand? You can stand. Okay. As long as the microphone is able to pick you up, you're okay. fine. Okay. All right. Um, I'm Naomi Jirley, 133 West Mill. I know so many people in this room. Like, I just really wanted to look at everybody, and I know so many of you. I know so many of you. And so many of you are completely on polarized ends. And that really hurts my heart. So to me, I'm glad we're all in this room together. Because it means that there is an answer. I personally don't believe critical race theory is the answer. I do know my story. And my story is that I've given my life to Jesus Christ. And everything I do for this community, everything I do for this community is because of him, because he gives me gifts to give this community. And I, I ask all of you to look inside and find out the gifts that you've been given and how you can use those to give glory to God, help the children, and help families in this community grow to the greatest extent they can. Thank you. Julie, thank you. Uh, next card is Marlene Nelson. Ms. Nelson, come on up. As you're coming up, can I jot down your address quick? 1726 Mosier.
First of all, I, I noticed something at previous school board meetings, and I don't want to forget to ask it. During the Pledge of Allegiance, I had noticed some of the school board members put their left hand behind their back. What does that mean? It's an abnormal position to get into. Everybody else has their arm hanging down by their left side. I was told that means you're not proud of your country. If that is what it really means, there's a jet on a runway somewhere. Feel free to take it. I love my country. My husband gave a fourth of his life for this country. And so I have a problem if somebody can't honor my flag. Also, Pastor Scott Peterson had an article in the paper Wednesday, August 4th in the Steele County Times. I was so pleased that we had a member of the clergy come out and speak against critical race theory. And I was wondering, where's the rest of the clergy? Well, I heard some of it here tonight, and they're in favor of it. But like he says, CRT is attempting to force upon the American population a single false victimization attitude when it comes to certain people groups. But this time, it is not socioeconomic status of divisions, but race divisions, whites versus minorities. CRT divides based on two negative outlooks. Either you are the oppressed or the oppressor, and it is all based on your race. CRT wants reparations made by white people based on the actions of some of their forefathers. To tell today's white people that they are oppressors is absolutely ridiculous. We're talking way back in the 1800s when people owned slaves, and there was a time black people even owned black slaves. And we were the ones who ended slavery so fast because President Lincoln put in the Emancipation Proclamation. We have been a melting pot here for such a long time. I didn't really see this racial issue getting bad until Obama was in. Eight years of him and everything was race, race, race. And it's only gotten worse since he was in. But I'm so pleased that this pastor spoke out and he says, you are the one you are the one that holds you down because America as a country is not racist. You can be anything you set your heart to be and no one is stopping you. But teaching this unhealthy teaching of oppression is what some are trying to push through our education system. This is an agenda. It's a communist Marxist agenda. And I don't want it in our schools. And it's not just in our schools. It is permeating other areas. I understand now it's being taught at West Point Academy. General Miley uh, was on TV, and he's less worried about the war in Afghanistan and more worried about teaching CRT. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. What's going on in Afghanistan is ridiculous. But anyway, um, if this is all based upon pitting one race against another, there is no way that this is going to bring peace and harmony between people. Ms. Nelson, that is your time. You're kidding. My three minutes are up already? Yeah, he's right. Okay. Uh, next card is uh, Darlene Schmidt. Ms. Schmidt, as you're making your way up, I just want to double check. It's 2085 Fieldstone Avenue Southeast, correct? I was hoping you'd run out of time before I got my thing. <laughs> Short and sweet. I'm too old to do this, and I'm not a public speaker. But I've lived a long time. I'm from the Second World War, the Depression days. That's where I grew up. Went to country school. And believe me, consolidation was not the poor country kids that didn't learn anything. I just had a classmate of mine who just passed away this summer tell me, we couldn't believe it when you country kids came to town. You were smart kids. My gosh, she said, I couldn't believe it. That tells you something. This has all been about trying to control the kids. Kids are like little sponges. They soak up things that are. you tell them when they're little. Tell them the right thing. Don't talk about race. Amen. Amen. You don't need to talk about color of skin or anything else. Read Carter's book when he was growing up. 
how they never paid attention to the color of the skin until they got a certain age because then the grown-ups had gotten in on it and they were telling the kids and so he could tell by his friends how he was being treated when he got a certain age. We don't need to talk about that. We need to talk about loving each other. Amen. Loving each other. Amen. It's foolishness. It's just foolishness. Your kids, all of you yet. I grew up, like I say, during the Second World War. I watched my brothers go off to the Second World War. It was not easy on my parents, believe me. That's all we did. Roosevelt was our president. He was in there so long. When I was a kid, I figured there was never going to be another president. <laughs> it's, it's just unbelievable what's been happening. I, I watch the news all the time, and I just think, what utter nonsense. Why don't we spend our time seeing what we can benefit the kids for reading better, yes. for writing better. We used to have the board up here with me. We did our penmanship from off the board. We did our penmanship and stuff. I've talked to people for years who have said, people who come out of Otana School, some of them can't read or write decent and stuff. Let's teach the basic things. Let's teach them not the color of our skin. I think that's all I have to say. Uh, Ms. Schmidt, thank you. Uh, that appears to have been our last card. I do want to thank all of you that came up for a public forum tonight to uh, to share how you feel. And I very much appreciate that the audience was uh, respectful of the folks as they were speaking. I do appreciate that. We are going to move on. Uh, the next item tonight would be reports. First item would be the Oatana online report. I'm turning things over to Mr. Elstad for some introductions here. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, tonight we are going to uh, hear a presentation, an update on Oatana online, which is a new program that you know we started, uh, we applied for last winter and were approved. Um, working through the pandemic, being able to offer other opportunities for our students. And so I'm going to ask Michelle Krell to come up as our Director of Teaching and Learning so that she can address OATANA online. Sarah. Well, good evening. Thank you for... Um, Having me tonight, I'm I'm excited to share about Oatana Online. Last winter, we talked about the fact that we were going to look at being an online school. I'm going to pause you for just a moment. We'll allow for a minute for the folks that are exiting to take their conversation out. Well, I wanted to give you a report on Oatana Online. Last winter, <clears throat> we started having the conversation about the fact that we had many of our students um, who had benefited from an online experience and how we should explore being, becoming an online provider. And so, as I reported last spring, it was a very rigorous process. We applied through the Minnesota Department of Education. We were approved to be a fully accredited online provider. So not only can we have students from Oatana, but across the state of Minnesota because we're approved as an accredited online provider through the Minnesota Department of Education. So I just want to share some information as to how this has come to fruition for us. So as I said, we are a full online provider for kindergarten through 12th grade students, uh, approved through the Minnesota Department of Education. We are tuition free because we are a public school. Um, and of course, we have really focused on high quality teaching and learning um, with developing this program. As a, as a district, we are providing devices for our students. So kindergarten and first grade students get iPads. Um, students in second through 12th grade receive a Chromebook. 
I mean, as I said, we're not only open to students in Otana, but also the state of Minnesota. So when a student enrolls in Otana Online, they're enrolling in a fully accredited um, provider where students can meet all of their educational um, graduation requirements to graduate from high school through Otana Online. I just want to talk about the different programs and what they look like. So there's been a lot of work, there's been a lot of teamwork happening to just decide what is it that we want to provide for our students. So as we looked at what we experienced last year, we learned a lot. I think one of the things we learned is that our elementary program um, really worked out well for our students. And so we've really created an Otana Online K-5 program that mirrors um, but much improved from last year during our pandemic. Um, so our students are in um, a classroom with a teacher, an online classroom with a teacher. Um, they begin their day with a morning meeting. They're able to um, have some social emotional learning, working together, understand what their day looks like. And then throughout their day, they have whole group instruction for reading, whole group instruction for math, and then they have small group instruction that happens throughout the day based on whatever their needs are. And so one of the additional things, and then in addition to that, um, we also have a fully online um, curriculum that supports the work our teachers are doing in the we'll say virtual face-to-face -face kinds of times. Um, and so students are doing independent work that's based on reading, math, science, and social studies. In addition to that, we also have students that are working, um, doing live meets with a, a Phi Ed teacher, live meets with a music teacher, and live meets with an art teacher um, every week so that they have the opportunity to have a really well-rounded education. Um, one of the things that we have done this for our town online is to really work on having learning coaches. A learning coach is a, a person at home that's supporting them. One of the expectations of Oatan Online is that there's someone at home. It could be a, a mom, a dad, a grandparent, a college lady, brother or sister, um, but someone at home that can help support the learning that happens um, in that virtual classroom. And then, of course, we have one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one check-ins with the teachers. So our students really, instead of being in a classroom with their peers, they're virtually with their peers um, as far as our elementary program for Oatana Online. This is what yeah. I just, yes. Can I interrupt with a question? Can yeah. you talk me through what is that K-5 interactive look like with the teachers? So I'm thinking about when we had to do distance learning at my house, elementary kiddo there was morning meeting with everybody in the class mm -hmm. there was the live reading sessions because it's k-5 are you grouping them like if there's oh, five yeah. kindergartners with 10 first graders like what is that look like? yeah no great question so our enroll first we were thinking Maybe we have two teachers and they have three grade level bands. Um, we're at the point where we have full classroom. We have a K-1 teacher and she has a full classroom. We have a 1-2 teacher with a full classroom. We have a, and then we have, let me see, K-1, I'm sorry, K-1, 2-3. And then we have so many third graders that we split them up. So we have a 2-3 and a 3-4 and then a 5-6 classroom. So, um, and what I can tell you, and I'll talk about enrollment in a little bit, um, it has been, it was fast and furious the last two weeks of school, or two weeks prior to school starting here, um, people enrolling into OTAN online. So we've had to pivot a little bit from our original model that we had thought, because we didn't know what to expect. You know, and Michelle, what I get so excited about is it, it describes, it, it reminds me of other multi-age classrooms mm -hmm. that we offer in our district and how that can suit kids' needs, you know, when they're kind of, I don't know, because they're in different places. Sort of yes. back to that, what do, what do kids need? They need different things at different times. And Absolutely. That's very exciting. Absolutely. And, and, and we're committed to making sure that students get exactly what they need. And that's where our small groups come in play. Um, you know, students are being able to, whether they're reading at a certain level or whatever it is, they're able to have that same practice that we would be giving within a regular classroom in person. Our middle level program, um, so our uh, sixth grade students have kind of a combination of what we're doing at the elementary and what we're doing 7-12. We really felt like we needed to bridge that. 
And so um, our sixth grade students um, start with a morning meeting with their teacher, and then they have um, courses, online courses that they're taking. Um, and then they have Fiat Music and Art live with a teacher, um, like our elementary students do. And then there's an office time where the teacher has to connect with students middle of the day to answer any questions that they might have. Um, the classroom teacher is, is watching their progress um, in the online curriculum that, that we've chosen. And so that classroom teacher and student know exactly where they're at every single day as far as how they're performing within the online platform. Um, we've, it's really self-paced. So half of the courses are self-paced and half of them are really working through with the teacher. When we get to, I'm going to jump to 712 now. 712 really um, is about students that are enrolled in courses. So our middle school 7th and 8th grade students, they have courses pretty much all year except for their elective courses are usually for a quarter or semester. But they have reading, math, science, social studies all year long for a skinny, or a, we'll call it a skinny, but a shorter time than a high school student does, but all year long. And um, so we really encourage with all of our students, 712 is really thinking about goal setting, setting timelines. It's really helping students to um, create this independence for the learning that they, that they need to do and really taking ownership over it. Um, Here's our 6th six, six through 8th grade um, courses that they're given. So you can see we've got some core content courses, and then we have some elective offerings for students. Um, when we get to our high school model, it is, is completely online. It's completely self-paced. So what, I've, what I tell students is I've done a lot of parent orientations in the last week or so, and what, I, what I've told them is you're very fortunate in the fact that because of the online curriculum that we've chosen, there's a teacher online on that online curriculum teaching them the course content. So if I'm in math, there's a board certified teacher online in math, pre-recorded lessons, that students are able to watch the video. They can go back and replay the video as many times as they want to. They can go back to sections they don't understand. There's practice within, built in within this course, so there's a, an instruction, there's a warm-up, there's instruction, there's um, practice for students, there's quizzes, and then there's a test. And so actually before a student can take a test, they actually have to, the tests are locked, teachers unlock tests only when they believe the student is ready to take that test based on the work and the quizzes that they had prior to that. So really trying to make sure that students aren't just hurrying through the content, but actually they're learning it, and then we're providing support if they're struggling with anything. So they have the online teacher, and then they also have a teacher that's assigned to them um, that is their, their teacher that will connect with them if they have questions. And so it's very much self-paced. It's flexible. Um, the system that we're using is very intuitive. So there's a, there's a progress bar for every course. So they have a dashboard, and I should have put that up here. They have a dashboard, and each of their courses are on the dashboard. And there's a, there's a bar, there's a line, and it shows you how, how the progress is in each of the courses. So if they're on, on par, they're at the line. If they're working ahead, they're above the line. If they're behind, then you can see that. You can always see what their percentage of their grade is. You can see how they're doing at all times. Every time they complete an assignment, their grade, their, their cumulative grade, or their actual grade is what we call it, is showing for them. Um, and so, as I said, you know, we have teachers that have, um, they provide support. Um, so we have a teacher of record for all of our courses that are Otana public school teachers. And then um, teachers of office hours where students can say, I need a little bit more help with math. I'm going to connect with my math teacher. She has office hours between 1 and 1.45 daily. I'm going to send a message to my teacher. I want help. Or the, or, the, or the teacher can send a message to the students to say, hey, let's connect at 1 o'clock. Looks like we need to work a little bit. You need some help in this area. Um, and so... That's the, way, that's the way the program kind of works. Um, obviously, 
Oatana Online um, adheres to our graduation requirements. So here are all the grad requirements that we have. I'm in the Oatana Public Schools. And um, we have actually over 35 electives for students to have chosen from um, when they enrolled in Oatana Online. Um, one thing I want to note, too, is that 9th through 12th grade is high stakes. You know, students need to get the credits to be able to graduate. And so, um, you know, we have an Oatana Online counselor who met individually with every single one of our high school students and took their transcripts and really identified what courses they should be taking and talked through them so that they are, we want to continue to have them on target to graduate at the end of their senior year. And so that's really important to us. We want them to be successful. And so that's that there's been a lot of work put into developing their schedules so that they meet the needs of each of our students. Right now, here's the current enrollment. We have 184 students that are enrolled in Oatana Online. How many would you have guessed? <laughs> you know, it was so hard to know. Like, I thought oh, maybe 50 or 60, 100 would be great. We're at 184. <laughs> And um, we did have, because of staffing, like we, we hit our max capacity. Um, so we did have to close enrollment on the 16th of August because, and we contacted MDE and that was totally allowable because they recognized the need for ensuring we had enough staff to cover the students that we had. Um, Michelle, how many are these students, maybe you're getting to this, how many are, um would you say our residents, you know, of our mm -hmm. district, and maybe how many have open and enrolled from other communities? Yeah, so other I would say that um, about 115 of them are Oatana residents, and the rest are open and enrolled. So about a third, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then I just want to just be able to share with you what we have for staff. You can see I've got pictures of the elementary staff right there. So those are our five elementary teachers. Um, and then um, we also, I think this clicks open, and this is this is this is our um, six twelve staff. So you can see that we've got some administrators. Um, you know, I can't thank enough our administrators um, who've really pitched in. Erin Helverson has done a great job. Six eight, um, working with um, developing schedules. Um, Mr. Brenton Shavers has done a great job of making sure that we are getting all of our students enrolled into our online um, program. Phil Wyken has helped with a lot of the logistical things of the high school. Um, and then Justin Keel and Ann Michelson have been the lead at our elementaries working through that. And so if I just scroll through here, you can see that you know we do have quite a few teachers that are working with Oatana Online. Um, so, and these students or these teachers are working um, at the at the high school, middle school, high school level. They're they're part of their their um, job is one period a day where they're doing Oatana online, and that's completely dedicated to um, Oatana online students. And so, what I continue to tell parents is, it doesn't look anything when you think about six twelve. It doesn't look anything like distance learning last year. Um, I think we have a lot to be proud of, and we're really hopeful um, and thankful. I think I think we have a lot of families that are very thankful. I can't tell you how many families have reached out to me and said, thank you so much for providing this opportunity. And there's a wide variety of why um, families will choose OATAN online. Maybe they really just enjoyed learning online last year, and it was, it was a good fit for them. Some of our students um, may be having some... Some, some mental health issues that prevent them from being successful in person. Some of our families have, um, some of their children are um, immunocompromised or they have a family member that's that. So I think that when we look at this, um, it not only benefits our students, but it also made it so that some of our students didn't walk out the door because we were now providing what other districts or can provide for students that maybe need a different type of learning style. So that is the brief update on Oatana Online. Any questions? Good work. Thank you. Thanks. And, and I should point out too, check out our website. There's a lot of information on our website. Our registration guides are out there. Um, 
I'll, I'll be honest, it wasn't an easy task. <laughs> <laughs> but we're there. Do you have to know of the 184, how many are possibly attending for going to schools for band, orchestra? We, you know, we do allow that. So if you, if we have some band or orchestra or choir students, um, particularly at our high school, those students can come in person to those classes. Um, we do have some elementary students who are taking coming in person for lessons. We're not doing virtual of any of those things. If they're interested in participating in our music program, they're going to come in person. In addition, at our high school level, we do have some students that are taking um, some, some advanced placement courses or some specific courses that like internships. Um, we just have a handful of students that are coming in person for that. Um, but yes, great question. Maybe to just piggyback on that, can can you speak to other extracurriculars, you know, athletics or mm -hmm. other activities? Are, yep. Are these students also engaged in, in that way? Or so if our students that? live within the Oatana boundary, our Oatana public schools, they're able to participate in sports <laughs> and activities. Um, Beyond Oatana Public Schools, there's MSHSL rules that we have to abide by, so that doesn't work out. So um, anybody that lives within the Oatana Public Schools is able to be part of the soccer team or whatever it is. And we do have some we do have some athletes that have chosen to do this. How about staffing? Was it tough to find teachers to assume that that role, or or were there teachers that just gravitated toward? You know, I. I worried about that and actually our staff like I put put the word out that we need another like even just Friday <laughs> I need another language arts teacher for high school and the first phone call I made I got a yes so I mean I know that there yes it, it, it honestly um, it hasn't been difficult there's a right niche you know there's people that have really enjoy ha have enjoyed instructing online too so um, I haven't twisted any arms, so I, I think it's 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 worked out well. Good. And I can say that today was our first day um, with our nine twelve students, and so before the about two hours before this meeting, um, I contacted Mr. Shavers and just said, "Hey, how did we do on like kids logging into our online curriculum?" And so I'm proud to say that 46 out of 47 have already logged in and started their academic work on their first day of school. And that one student might be a night owl and he might do it tonight at 10. Who knows? But I mean, that to me is a success as well. Terrific. Any other questions? Thank All you right, very much. Thank you so Thanks, much. Uh, up next would be uh, a discussion items only, board forum. I'm going to start down on this end. Daniela, do you have anything for board forum tonight? Nope, just had a nice first day of school. Tell us about it. Uh, in the morning, we had like senior sunrise, so all of, well, only the senior girls showed up, but we like watched the sunrise together and had breakfast. And then in the morning, like student council was greeting everyone at the doors. And then I just had my classes, and it was nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Deborah, anything for board forum? Mm, not tonight. Eric. Uh, facilities committee, we met today, and the new high school was still on budget and online or on time. Um, just advise people if they want to follow. There are updates all the time on the website with the uh, drone. drone pictures for all the change. And hopefully in the next week or two, the Mason area work will start being visible, weather permitting. Good. Thank you. Nothing for me. Okay. Uh, the only thing I have for board forum tonight is uh, at the end of September, our next regularly scheduled regular meeting would be Monday, September 27th. And we're moving that just a day later to Tuesday the 28th. Uh, there was a scheduling conflict that we had with that day. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention right now. That would be the next regular meeting. We're moving it from Monday the 27th to Tuesday the 28th. Lori, do you have anything for board forum? No. Jolene? No, thank you. Mr. Elstad? Uh, administrative report, you have anything? Yeah, I have a few up updates for you. Um, as uh, Daniela mentioned, we had a great opening day at Owatonna High School in our ALC today. Uh, it was great to see kids back in the building and interacting with one another. We also had sixth grade orientation today with our new sixth grade students. was able to uh, catch up with a few of them during the lunchtime today. 
uh, having all of the students together, uh, the sixth graders together is always that first day of remembering that you have to put your lunch pin number in and those sorts of things, but uh, went really smoothly. It was great to see kids. We also have been conducting before school interviews in our K-5 buildings, uh, which really helps to kind of build that relationship with families before the school year starts. And we also are able to kind of get rid of some of the stuff that takes up time during the year, like pictures and those sorts of things. So uh, those have been going really well. I uh, wanted to provide you a legislative update. I have recently reached out to Senator Jasinski and Representative Petersburg, and I'll be meeting with them uh, to kind of discuss the upcoming session as we prepare for their start in January for the 2022 legislative session. Um, and then I also want to make sure, so we have, during COVID, uh, um, Officer Olchenbrunn's and Officer Veit uh, left our schools because there are, there's a general rotation of officers that come in and out as our school resource officers. And I know you haven't been able to meet our new officers yet, so I wanted to take this opportunity tonight because we do have uh, Steve, who, Officer Bowman, who's here. And Bob, if you want to come up, please, and you could introduce them. Um, come on up. Thank you. Um, Officer Bowman actually started last come year, but because, of, <laughs> but because of COVID, we weren't able to uh, have him introduce himself. And then uh, Derek is a new officer, too. So Bob, I'll let yeah. you introduce them. Well, thank you. we got Steve Bowman here and Derek Quinlan. Uh, Steve's been on for a year, and I think it's a five-year term, isn't it? So he's stuck with us for five years. We don't want to see any of these guys ever go. <laughs> There's a long-standing tradition of us working with the Owatonna Police Department, and it has been nothing but spectacular yeah. uh, since the Owatonna Police Department has come on board with us. So we wanted to take this opportunity to introduce you guys to these two who are going to be out and about with students every single day and, and uh, making their lives even better. So yeah, these are the two guys. So yeah. Questions? Fire them at them. <laughs> if not, no big deal. <laughs> no fun. Uh, no, I appreciate you guys being in the school. I've worked with a wide variety of kids that have a wide variety of experiences with local law enforcement. And because you guys are there and you look different than what their maybe previous experience has been, it matters. And so thank you for doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. I don't know. Could one of you just address briefly, kind of um, building assignments, or sort of how that how that plays out for you on a daily, weekly basis? Sure. Uh, at the uh, I am assigned to the middle school, but I also oversee the elementary schools. So if they have any cares or concerns or issues or questions or anything they would like me to participate in, they call me, and I do it. So my office is at the middle school, uh, and the middle school is at the high school. Sorry, Derek, and I'm at the high school in the ALC, so I kind of. I'll mainly be at the high school, and then if the ALC needs me, I'll go there as well. All right. Thanks We're glad you're here. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. I also wanted to make sure that I provided an, a COVID update uh, to the board this evening. And so, as you know, on a weekly basis, we consult with Steele County Public Health. And uh, we look at our, our, our COVID numbers, especially the number of cases that are impacting students between the ages of 5 and 18. In general, the county uh, case count doesn't always uh, tell the story. And so I'm, I'm actually pleased to result that last week, the report came back that we had 26 cases uh, of Owatonna students, again, between the ages of 5 and 18. I'm happy to report that actually this week, it's down to 15 cases, so we're seeing the number drop which is great to see as we start the school year. Um, through that consultation, we try to work with how do we, uh, are, there, are there next steps we need to take? Steel County Public Health is supportive of our plan moving forward, which again is that we'll be strongly recommending masks in buildings. Um, we have updated our air filtration systems in every building to make sure we're exchanging air more often to make sure that the air is cleaner and safer. Uh, we're also doing social distancing where it's feasible. Uh, we are working on a testing program right now that will be available if students or staff want to partake in that. We're finalizing that protocol as we move forward. And just as a quick reminder, when we monitor our daily attendance, we're looking for are we starting to see more and more kids maybe start getting sick? And that doesn't include just always being positive, but also just we're seeing the spread like we would for three or four years ago when we talked about the flu. If we had 5% of students in a building uh, that had uh, contracted flu-like symptoms. We have, as a right as a district, we had the right to close the building to do some disinfection and then put other mitigation strategies in place. That's the same guidance we've been receiving right now, so we continue to monitor that daily attendance for that. And as I mentioned before, we monitor weekly public health data for our 
uh, for that trend data to see uh, if there are other steps, uh, mitigation strategies and steps we have to take. So, so far, we're keeping with the plan that we have issued before. Terrific. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, item 7 tonight would be the consent agenda. Quick reminder here is we are going to approve the minutes from July 12, August 9, and August 11, as well as the disbursement and personnel report. Anybody have any reason to believe we need to pull any of these items out and vote on them separately? Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Sorry. We have a second. So approved. <laughs> yes. Uh, Eric, so this moved. is a roll call vote. Yep. Deborah? Yes. Jolene? Aye. Lori? Aye. Mark? Aye. Tim? Aye. I myself, Sanai. 6 0 pass. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, there are a couple items that need board action tonight. The first would be the truth and taxation hearing date. And I am i don't think Amanda is here, but you're going to, yes. So this is a regularly scheduled meeting that we schedule in every December, which is our truth and taxation meeting. Uh, that meeting right now is tentatively scheduled based upon your approval this evening on Monday, December 13th, 2021 at 6 p.m. at the Otan School District office. Any questions? I'll make the motion that we approve the truth and taxation hearing date for December 13, 2021 at 6 p.m. here at the district office. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor with an aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Item B, there is an extended trip for the FFA kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a national FFA convention that our students attend in Indianapolis. This year it's in October. And uh, so they have applied for uh, an extended trip request, which is a part of your policy whenever there's a request that goes overnight uh, for a group of students or advisors that has to go through board approval. So this is what is being offered up tonight for your consideration. It was in your packet. Anybody have any questions with regard to the trip? Oh. Hearing none, would one of you please offer up the uh, motion? I move that the board approve the trip request for the National FFA Convention in October. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor with an aye? Aye. aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Item C, which is the strategic roadmap, and I'm looking, there she is, uh, is the strategic roadmap. And I'm going to ask Dr. Sherry Allen to come up in an overly simplistic sense. Uh, this is our working document to address our stated priorities. And it was accomplished with the professional assistance of, of an organization called Teamworks International. And tonight, Dr. Sherry Allen joins us to provide a quick synopsis of the development that went into this final draft. Board Chair Sebring, members of the board, um, and Superintendent Allen, it's an honor to be here to say we are to the point where we are bringing it to you for approval of the strategic roadmap. I'm going to pause you for just a second, and it harkens back to all of your days of being the Superintendent Allen in the Mankato School District, but <laughs> ours is Superintendent Elstad. What did I say, Allen? Allen. <laughs> Forget it. That is embarrassing. Sorry, Mr. Elstead. So Superintendent Elstead, I appreciate uh, stopping me, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, so the work that we have been doing with you as a district, um, I will tell you, um, Dr. Ray Queener, my colleague, and I have been very involved in this since the beginning of uh, this last school year practically and working through it. And I want you to know that it's been a very comprehensive process, very transparent, open, and we have a process called classroom to boardroom. In that work, we work very clearly on ma majority of the time of getting feedback from people in the community, from stakeholders, students, staff, and parents. And this process, uh, I will tell you, had a great response to our survey. We had hundreds of parents, uh, staff, and students that participated. People were excellent at getting the link out and the work and also focus groups where we needed to to make sure that we had a very comprehensive plan. Um, the work started with a story wall, which talks about the past of the school district. There were community members that were asked to be a part of that, um, along with a very large staff group from decades of those that have been in the district, from our most experienced to our newest staff members. Um, all the way through the department, the desired daily experience is where we pulled in the um, surveys. Desired daily experience, what is it that the Ootonic Public Schools wants each and every student, staff, and um, most importantly, 
um, making sure that parents are a big part of partnership. What is the desired daily experience every time a student walks into the classroom, into your schools, onto the fields, into the gyms, in activities? And so all of that work has come to district uh, vision card, which now we're here to the board with your feedback, again, around the strategic plan, the work of the board to govern the work, to make sure that Stu Superintendent Elstead has the vision and the permission to work with teams so that students like Daniela are very successful every day when they come to school. So that is what we're doing um, at this point, and we've had updates to the board. Um, all of this, when you think about the work that has happened, truly um, looking at what you want next for the Otana Public Schools as it relates to inspiring excellence every learner every day. Thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for the quick overview. Any questions? We spent a fair amount of time on this a couple of weeks ago, and I thought that that was um, it was time well spent. And uh, I do just like the um, the manner in which it there's a level of accountability that we have to ourselves to say this is our goal. What are we doing about it? It's a great. And I, I would like to say, you know, as we work with um, Ray Queener, my colleague, myself, and our other team, um, part of TeamWorks, as we work with districts, I want you to know you had excellent participation from all groups and very transparent in that process. So that's a real compliment to your school district um, and your staff, students, and families. Thank you. With that, uh, I will move that the board approve the strategic roadmap as presented in your board packet. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor with an aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item D, contract award recommendation. It's a good thing Mr. Olson is still around. I'll turn things over to Mr. Elstad for a couple of introductions and some updates. Yeah, I'm going to just going to in, I'm going to bring uh, Mr. Olson up here to talk about this. So as we have moved uh, forward with our, our our progress on the high school. Uh, there are times when things uh, need to be uh, switched around a bit because maybe there wasn't a vendor that carried something, so we needed to adjust that. So uh, tonight, what's being offered up for your consideration is just a recommended of some operable partitions and rebid of elevators. And I'll turn it over to Bob for other information. No, that sounds good. You said it very well, Jeff. Um, sometimes when when you're designing buildings, um, you have to design them in a certain way based on certain recommendations or certain specs specifications. We got, we got questioned, or our architects got questioned on a couple of them, that it was solely only for one group of, uh, or one company. In Minnesota bid law, you got to make sure that other, everybody can bid on it if they can meet those specifications. Well, there were questions about the elevator, and there were questions about the operable doors, or the glass doors that go. So Wold and uh, Kraus Anderson needed more time to do investigations to make sure that the people that were looking to bid could meet those specifications. Um, so what we did is we pulled those from the uh, the first bid, rebid them, and we actually had more people bidding on it the second time, and I think we uh, came out pretty well. So um, we're pretty happy with what we have right now, and we're as we said earlier, we're still on budget and we're still on time. So I'm just asking you to approve the two that came out after being vetted out by our uh, architects and our um, construction manager that these are the two top. Um, they gave us the best bids, and they're going to give us the best product. So. Met your standards. Met our standards, met the specifications. Um, we had to do a few little, tweak a few little things, but it, we don't need to get into that tonight. So yep. they're going to be great for us. Good. Any questions for Bob? Hearing none, one of you be kind enough to introduce this motion. I move that Ford Metro be awarded the bid for operable partitions for a total bid amount of $576,700 and Schumacher Elevator Company be awarded the rebid for elevators for a total bid amount of $222,848 as recommended by Carl Sanders. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor with an aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Last item tonight would be gifts to the district. Mr. Elstad, anything to add here? Yeah, thank you. I just wanted to make a comment. So as we approach homecoming, which is coming up the first week of October, uh, we during this uh, the gifts of district at this particular meeting, uh, you're being asked to approve uh, I think three thousand five hundred dollars in gifts that are going towards the homecoming festivities, for a total amount tonight of five thousand seven hundred dollars with one unique gift, and that is that we had a patron in our community offer up a two thousand nine Nissan Murano, 
nice. for our high school students so that they could uh, use that for automotive class and things like that. Mm. Yes. Any questions? Hearing none, one of you, one, one of you please uh, introduce this last motion. I move that the board approve the resolution for gifts for acceptance of gifts as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Eric, one more time. Yep. Deborah? Yes. Jolene? Aye. Lori? Aye. Mark? Aye. Tim? Aye. And I, myself, and I, 6 0 pass. Motion carries. Thank you very much. That brings us to the end. I'll entertain the motion that we adjourn our meeting. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor with an aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Good meeting, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you.